Well, dear listeners, I have a um, a bit of very bad news to relay to you. I uh, recently became aware that I have contracted Havana syndrome, um, and and I don't. I was in Cuba, and I was uh, you know it was just going through my morning routine. I was on my fourth mimosa, and I had just finished. Uh, planting some some landmines around an orphanage, and I started to feel kind of <laughs> icky. Um, and and I sure enough, I, I determined that it's Havana syndrome. I've been shot with a deadly uh, Cuban brain ray, and I'm I probably need advanced healthcare uh, for free for this. So just wanted to let you guys know, keep you in the loop. Uh, I like how the entire premise of, of that entire of that bullshit was, uh, yeah, as an American citizen, you're not entitled to health care unless you're going to go and fucking terrorize the third world country. <laughs> then, you know, we, we'll, we'll foot that. We'll f- foot that bill. Fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> I really hope whatever state apparatus of the countries that I stay in uh, adopts the same thing, because finally my uh, degenerate alcoholism can turn into a real disability. And I can uh, retire <laughs> and not have to do this goddamn podcasting thing anymore. <laughs> I will force Hakeem and JT to pay off uh, pay off um, disability payments to me, uh, and they will not be able to <laughs> fight it because they're communists. And I will uh, make sure they're canceled everywhere. So it's just uh, it just works so well for me. Thank you, CIA. That's the big exactly. brain play. Big brain. Exactly right. So uh, the biggest, the biggest recent L of the CIA has basically been Havana these nuts. <laughs> that, that's what we have to share. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is Actually, very specifically, if, if you, they they just said the Havana not getting these nuts, uh, which we can. Yeah. yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. Uh, for those who are unaware, there was a conspiracy theory um, of sorts that was actually endorsed by the American government. Uh, that uh, Cuban officials or the Cuban intelligence ag- agencies and the government had used some special ooh brain ray or some fucking bullshit, some 1950s cartoon <laughs> bullshit to basically I don't I, was this it was supposed to just make them feel bad or was it supposed to cause heart attacks I don't know what the fuck yeah, it was supposed it, to, uh, they couldn't describe it they said that it just had you know vague uh, feelings of of sickness or of you know discomfort and uh, the symptoms varied by person so it's very hard to nail down exactly Ooh. what this ray does but <laughs> so it's obviously just these dudes who maybe grew a conscience for you know murdering these people in foreign lands <laughs> um but no, it's, it's surely it's got to be like a death ray. Yeah, exactly. Right. Basically, basically what they're saying is that uh, the Cubans have developed a, a death note, <laughs> and, and they say there's no innovation <laughs> under socialism. <laughs> Sorry, Gupta, you're gonna say something. No, no, you're fine. And it's not even just like these commandos or these big uh, CIA or foreign intelligence officers. Is these people that like work all the all day, all night in their office in whatever embassy in whatever developing country they've been placed in? That obviously fucking probably despise their job and they just want to go back to Wisconsin and see their their fucking dog or whatever. Uh, <laughs> so this was an ideal way to uh, to because they they've already they've already been like drinking themselves under the table and sleeping uh, going to bed at like four a.m. and their body and stress levels were already off the charts. So why not just tell your superior, hey dude, uh, I heard this Havana syndrome thing. Uh, I probably have it. And when they test them. <laughs> Literally, their body is basically decaying, but not because they have Havana syndrome, but because the, the life in American bureaucracy uh, would t- lead anybody to to such a lifestyle. So it, it, it ended up kind of maybe, you know, we shouldn't be too harsh on it. Maybe it uh, led to some people getting saved from a career in a, in a cubicle over in uh, Peru or something. <laughs> I, sorry. I... <laughs> I just want to look this up if there's anything um, for the, for those who are unaware. This this uh, website called PubMed uh, and it's uh, like a national library of, of medicine and whatnot related part um, in the U.S. And you can look up basically medical research. And I just want to see if they have anything written on Havana syndrome. And the first article that comes up, the first bit of research that comes up is challenging the diagnosis of of Havana syndrome in quotation marks as a novel clinical entity. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's science speak. That's science speak for Havana syndrome is bullshit, and here's why. <laughs> oh fuck! No, hold on. There's another one. There's a 2018 study titled "Neurological Manifestations Among <laughs> Among Us." <laughs> really, it says oh my god. Oh, bogus. <laughs> Havana <laughs> syndrome among manifestations. <laughs> It says neurological manifestations among U.S. government personnel, but uh, um, among and U.S. 
خوانه اما گوز ایسی خوانه بروده 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 دریز دی خوانه اما گوز خوانه فایندینگز In this case study, in this case series of 21 individuals exposed to directional, audible, and sensory phenomena, a constellation of acute and persistent signs and symptoms were identified in the absence of an associated history of blunt head trauma. <laughs> Are you sure about that? <laughs> F- following exposure, patients experienced cognitive, vestibular, and oculomotor dysfunction, along with auditory symptoms, sleep abnormalities, and headache. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, do they have Literally their... depression. Mm. They, they just have They're depression. Hungover. Or They're just hungover. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, it's, it's fucking phenomenal. It's so insane that even the CIA itself had to go back on it. It's like, okay, State Department, I know you really want to push this thing, but e- this is too much even for us. Literally death rays, fucking brain scramblers. Trust us. I mean, if there's one organization on planet Earth that uh, we should trust, when it comes to them saying brain scramblers don't work is the CIA because trust me friends they fucking tried to make this shit they have tried <laughs> <laughs> so if they say okay this oh thing doesn't God. exist then it probably doesn't fucking exist holy shit. hold on I, I need to read something to one part of this stupid study it just talks about sleep and how their sleep was affected now you got Nick tell me about uh, tell me if this sounds like you a bit Okay. Individuals commonly reported issues with sleep, including reduced sleep duration and difficulty falling asleep. In addition, individuals experienced significant daytime fatigue. Most individuals required pharma- pharmacological intervention to improve subjective report of sleep architecture. This is you and your fucking catnip. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you unironically have uh, have Anna syndrome. Okay, we've d- we've we found the, the the diagnosis. Oh God, it's it's spreading. He's got it too. <laughs> Fuck, they'll find out I'm a fucking CIA asset. Oh, oh what, microphone is on the nap. No, no, sorry. <laughs> yep. Uh. <laughs> uh, there's one bit, and I'm just going to tell you, this is such bad medicine. I can tell you it's bullshit. Um, uh, for practicing clinicians, so people like myself, if a patient presents reporting a similar potential exposure and symptoms similar to those observed in mild traumatic brain injury, and in addition to a thorough history, objective evaluation should include screening assessments of vestibular, ocular, motor, and cognitive function. So basically they're saying do a regular neurological test. Fair enough. And then they say, based on findings of this assessment, appropriate referrals to subspecialists, blah, blah, blah. So basically they're telling you, you see somebody who has these symptoms, you do your proper neurological testing, and then you refer them to specialists if need be. But no part of this do they say, hey, this <laughs> diagnosis is most likely bullshit and should be very low on your differential. <laughs> so, oh, sorry, sorry. This is, uh, this is so stupid. The perks okay. of having a doctor on the podcast. And, and, uh, <laughs> oh my God. Finally, there what? are some perks Havana's... to this. Except for him constantly asking Havana. to put his finger up my ass. Oh, I need to check for bumps. Uh, yes, oh. He checked like I do. Minutes. He but... checks 20 times a day, and sometimes he checks by like moving it like constantly, and then he loops it up, and there's like four <laughs> fingers. I mean, how big are these bumps, dude? <laughs> <laughs> and then I love. Sorry, sorry. There's another article. It's it's from the Lancet. Oh no, the fucking Lancet published this. Okay, Havana syndrome might be the result of energy pulses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, th- oh god oh, oh there's some novak Djokovic. Okay. Shit. novak Djokovic believes in in energy back and represent fucking havana syndrome started oh, from here fuck. as well just like the whole planet yeah boy god is a serb yeah continue all right <laughs> 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 jesus christ okay yeah, that's oh god well but yeah you know at the end of the day i think there's one havana syndrome we can all get behind and that's having a couple of beers hey, hey. cold ones with the boys yeah boy Right. With that, with that said, today's episode we'll we'll uh, discuss a, a bit about the CIA, what it's been up to, um, its fails, and also the horrible things it's done, and hopefully not make it too much of a bummer. Because sadly, over its history, <laughs> the CIA has been relatively successful uh, to the detriment of basically all of humanity. Um, but uh, recently, they've been fucking up a bit. We'll we'll laugh at them for that. Um, but yeah, how do you guys want to start this? I have a couple of things I want to say that I didn't know, apparently. Um, I'll go for it. You know, that I always knew that the the, the meme, like, oh, um, the CIA is head, headquartered in, in Langley in Virginia, right? Um, but uh-huh. I didn't know that the actual name of their headquarters was the George Bush Center for Intelligence. <laughs> you didn't? <laughs> I had no idea. I had no fucking idea it was the George Bush. Center. What the fuck? Like, I don't care if it's Senior or, or, or the other guy, right? Uh, 
uh, yeah, it just seems a bit funny because usually you'd expect it to be some president that died like a hundred years ago, but it's fucking George Bush. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's that's number also one. Also deeply and, funny that it's the George Bush Center for Intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's uh, it. Like, you know, the latest, the, the but, previous Bushes were pretty smart, one could say. And uh, this the, like the, this shit, like I completely forgot about this. Sorry, sorry for um, if I'm interjecting, but uh, th- go, they're, go, they're go. obviously this is this. Um, American sense of uh, lesser mm. when they compare themselves to Europeans. So most European institutions, be it uh, insanely parasitic ones or just government institutions, are named after this uh, monarch or that or this great philosopher or intellectual. But because the U.S. is lacking in monarchs, literally the only, not the only, but one of the only good things about that fucking country, uh, they need to find <laughs> something to name things after. Uh, and as I said previously, they, they want to copy the, the elite European approach to it. So what do they choose? They choose one of the great non-monarchic dynasties that have been ruling the U.S. for quite a while now, which is the Bushes. So you, you can, you can uh, maybe I'm over overanalyzing this, but uh, I'm trying to put across to the viewer that as much as you think that there are no dynasties in the good old U.S. of A., it is arguably the last place on earth when it comes to the developed world that still very much so has running dynasties and not just one, but multiple ones that are competing constantly. Oh, yeah. Ab- yeah. I think you're absolutely right. They do the same thing with the Kennedys. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Beautifully said. The only, the only thing that would be funnier than calling it the George Bush intelligence the, the department is uh, calling it the Kennedy CIA Center. It would be like, I don't know, <laughs> call, call, like a guy beating his girlfriend, uh, calling it the oh like, girlfriend day when he beats the shit out of her, you know? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I just want to add, because that, that kind of weirdly uh, kind of um, uh, touches on their motto, their unofficial motto, which is, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall, shall make you free. This is a, a, a oh, biblical no. verse. <laughs> and... <laughs> And I don't know why it's it's strangely fitting because it sounds almost like um you know when you read you read a dystopian novel and then they have you know the oh all seeing fucking Big Brother eye yeah, and yeah. they're also gonna have some very uh, ironic or or you know hypocritical uh, um, uh, motto and it's it's exactly that yeah and uh, the you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free because <laughs> when I want the truth that's where I go the the CIA shit <laughs> writes itself yeah yeah but, excellent track um, record for truth telling CIA. Yeah, exactly right. Um, with all that said, though, um, <laughs> I remember uh, I, I was when researching for this video, you'd see a couple of things, and they'd be like, "Oh, you know, some of their operations may violate the Constitution of the United States." And I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> I like I like how that's supposed to be something uh, uh, inflammatory or some shit." Who cares if it violates the Constitution? It violates basic human dignity. But yeah. whatever. Anyways, um, but with all this being said, uh, we're not going to get into the... the um, everybody knows about COINTELPRO and MKUltra and this shit. The boring fucking surface level shit. Everybody knows about this. So I think we'll touch maybe on some things a bit deeper. We'll touch about that on that a little bit. Um, JT, do you want to start? Oh, boy. Yeah, where do we want to even begin? Do we want to do... <laughs> Uh, election meddling? Do we want to do coups? Do we want to do drug running? <laughs> so many options. President <laughs> killing? <laughs> you pick. President killing? Yeah. <laughs> we, we we can start with coups and then kind of work our way down. I think I should go last because my stuff is really, all of it is a bummer. <laughs> so I'll yeah. Just, yeah. So I think the thing to keep in mind with uh, the CIA, the United States, and our coup activity is that it's not ever in the interest of, you know, global democracy, as they always sell it. Um, you'll, there's like this one <coughs> news clip of this, uh, I forget if he was an ex-CIA uh, head or, or the current one, who was explaining that, oh yeah, we still do this, but always in the interest of democracy. Have we ever tried to meddle in other countries' elections? Oh, probably, but uh, it was for the good of the system in order to avoid the communists from taking yeah. over. For example, in Europe, uh, uh, in 47, 48, 49, uh, the Greeks and the Italians, we... We don't do CIA. that now, though. We don't mess around other people's well, elections, yeah? Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> only for a very good Can cause. Can you do that? Do a Vine video on a former CIA director. Only for a very good cause in okay. the interests of democracy. All right, thanks for being here. 
But that is obviously not the case because you look at coups like uh, 1954 coup in Guatemala, uh, and that was explicitly to make the United Fruit Company happy. The fruit company lobbied the U.S. government. The U.S. government sent the CIA, and the CIA just created such unbelievable instability and chaos and caused countless deaths. Uh, and that's just one example. And it's always it's always for um, you know the financial interests of the United States mm. and its businesses. Same with the 1953 coup in Iran over the nationalization of the their oil industry. And the CIA didn't even invit, admit involvement in that one until 60 years later in 2013. You, you got to appreciate the development, though, because selling it on bananas, like, why did you destroy this whole country? <laughs> bananas, but not like, why did you actually do uh, 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 bananas? It just doesn't work. It doesn't sell. It doesn't flow off the tongue. You know, I'm an advertising person, but oil, the thing that runs your motherfucking car, that sells. Why did yeah. you kill that innocent, uh, do things which led to the death of those innocent children? The shit that runs your car, Ford Mustang, literally <laughs> runs on the blood of, <laughs> of Persian children. <laughs> Jesus, why did I laugh? I'm, I'm sorry, but it's uh, yeah, bananas. They, uh, all I'm saying is, I would hire the, the the CIA PR team at least from back in the day. We will later talk. Uh, nowadays, yeah. it's a bit uh, a bit cringier. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, two books yeah, that, to recommend. Uh, go, Sorry to just uh, yeah, interject here. But two nerd. nice books to recommend <laughs> on, on, on Guatemala or just the, the entire banana issue. There's a book called Bitter Fruit. Um, it's uh, by, if I remember, um, oh, fuck, what's their name? Uh, Schlesinger, uh, Schlesinger, something like that. You'll you'll find. Just write bitter fruit. Um, and for um the uh, coup in Iran, uh, you should uh, take a look at uh, All the Shah's Men, um, by oh, yeah. Kinzer. These are two good books. Very and also a tidbit to add about um uh, the Guat uh, Guatemalan um basically American military aggression of of the U.S. Uh, against Guatemala at the time that that coup was happening um against Arbenz's government. Uh, che Guevara was in. Guatemala at the time and he himself he tried to organize like a desperate kind of defense uh, <laughs> for the bananas and it was, uh, like it was a, a bunch of banana carrying uh, children and the children were homosexuals uh, yeah. it's Che Guevara he, very big homosexual killer of course yeah. yes <laughs> yeah yes yeah, so, of course of course uh, <laughs> but uh, no the, the funny tidbit is that he, he couldn't get anything done and then he was arrested and he was thrown in prison for like nine months um, but <laughs> it's interesting to, to see how, how history kind of plays out like this sorry JT yeah. I cut you off go on no, uh, I was just going to recap and say that any time you see U.S. involvement abroad, and you're never really going to see it until later, you're not going to see any reports on it until decades later, generally speaking, it's never in the interest of global democracy. We, The United States has a hand in overthrowing more foreign uh, governments than any nation on earth, any nation in the history of of the world <laughs> it's, it's, it's like by a it's huge not even margin. close and we had yeah. rome we had rome motherfucker literally that was their whole <laughs> shtick i mean the u.s the, like according to one report that the u.s is responsible for at least 61 attempts at regime change during the cold war alone you know it's iraq cuba republic of congo laos the dominican republic brazil and the list just keeps going it's it's absurd and the the fact that we position ourselves as this bastion of freedom and democracy uh, is insane to me. And people will hear this and they will say, okay, Cold War, but the USSR and the KGB tried to do the same thing. Okay, decent enough argument, but the, the logic be behind the KGB and behind every single action that they undertook on non-USSR soil during the Cold War was very openly stated as we are helping communists in this place to turn it into something that we ag both agree this country should look like. It was never about we, we are here to liberate. We, the white man on a white horse, are about to save this <laughs> uh, degenerate, uh, usually different colored nation, etc., etc. There was a lot more honesty in it, and not only in the in the wording of it, but in the in the funding and in how they interacted and how they cooperated with local uh, communist organizations. And sometimes not even communist organizations, but uh, anti-imperialist groups as well. So it, it just, just I'm, I'm not trying to make the point that, uh, oh, because they didn't use the same words, they are better. But sometimes when you are playing the game 
which the game of to end all games, which was the Cold War, uh, the morality behind, not the morality, but the, the reasoning behind the actions you're undertaking is pretty much everything, is extremely important. And the U.S. sold uh, values to its local population, which it did not export to the places where they said that they are exporting at, exporting it to, while the USSR, with its faults during the Cold War, obviously, managed to, in the long term and most of the time, uh, support its allies truly and genuinely help uh, the working class on the ground to try and establish uh, an alternative to very often and usually uh, fascistic and backwards uh, uh, state apparatuses. It's actually amazing how the US and the CIA have always found themselves on the side of reaction. Basically, every always. single... Uh, yeah, every single um, far right uh, death squad uh, that has popped up on this uh, rotting earth that we have has had either a blood or paper or money trail that leads right back to the CIA and the American government. It can be as simple yeah. as the Contras. It can be to um, the the uh, religious uh, groups and uh, particularly the the uh, Christian uh, groups of Lebanon uh, during the Lebanese civil war, amongst other things, um, during uh, the the ethnic tensions of practically every every Latin American <clears throat> every uh, Latin American uh, country. At every level, you'll see some involvement of the United States on the side of reaction. You can't say that for for the Soviet Union. Um, pretty much every single uh, anti-imperialist or independence movement on earth has received uh, genuine support from the socialist powers. Meanwhile, pretty much every monarchy or fascist dictatorship on the earth has re received uh, money and soldiers and guns and pretty much everything else um, from the United States and uh, its institutions like the CIA. So uh, the, the the argument is really not uh, based in, in, in uh, truth. And even if the, the, But yeah, I completely agree. And even there were a few cases, I can't quote them right now, I don't want to make a mistake, but there were cases where they, quote unquote, supported moderates in specific countries. But what would happen in those specific countries, because they were always in the global south, uh, they would continuously be exploited by uh, by Western powers and by imperialism. And then eventually their economy would go down. And when the ec local economy goes down, what happens? Uh, communists rise up and pretty much in the 60s and 70s, the CIA genuinely realized that uh, even though it's easier to sell it at home, that we're supporting moderates over in country A, B, or C, in the long run, it will not make sure that uh, communists do not take over literally because of uh, rising class consciousness and people's disappointment in how the moderates are running the country. Even though, ironically, the moderates could potentially have managed to run the country relatively uh, to relative stability, which would not lead to a revolution, but in its greed in the Cold War, uh, Western US slash NATO powers always try to squeeze as much out of any potential region uh, as possible. So one other thing to consider with the with these coups and CIA involvement is it's not it doesn't just stop there. It doesn't stop with their, you know, funding of right wing death squads and kidnapping and assassination and torture and all that stuff. It can also lead to some much larger and much more uh, long lasting geopolitical issues like uh, take the 63 coup that resulted in the assassination of the president of South Vietnam, for example. Hmm. And then what, what do you guys think that led to? That led to the, the U.S. involvement in the Vietnam <laughs> War, which then led to the death of like a million Vietnamese people, many of whom were civilians and mm. many of whom are still dealing with the fallout of Agent Orange being dumped all over their home. It's we have to keep in mind like these. Yeah, CIA are are evil little Cretans, but they also serve the U.S. empire and these the little dominoes that they tip over these individual people or these small scale meddlings they become massive world changing events and that's for that amount of power to be vested in the hands of a completely unaccountable shadow organization is just mm. it's beyond me why that would even be considered even remotely okay yeah. which apparently by the way I didn't uh, I also didn't know this uh, they're apparently an independent organization within the United States mm. they don't actually have to answer to anybody I thought they actually they still, like with all the bullshit they did they had to answer to the, the, the like the president or something at least the senate the, I don't know I believe it was in the Reagan years that was the first time that they chose not to report their activities to the president 
Um, so they, at, the, at that point, became a completely unaccountable organization, accountable only to themselves. And so whatever they did was, was their decision alone. It was not the decision of uh, the president, the Senate, and certainly not the American people. It's wild to me. It's like you've got this, this paramilitary group of the most insane people in the world, like these, these radicals who believe that the United States should be the only nation to exist— and they're just, you know, they get to do whatever they want. They have near infinite funding. They smuggle drugs to and from countries, uh, including the United States. They create these massive geopolitical problems, and uh, they don't have to answer for any of it. It was a really good point yeah. that both of you addressed that I just want to touch on from like a different lens. So uh, recently I heard from very... Uh, Okay, so people listening to this are podcast listeners, which uh, rarely intersects, or intersects with people who listen to live streams uh, and streamers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But for the few of you that do actually uh, listen to streamers as well, uh, there, I, 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 when researching this topic, I, I wanted to see what the, the everyday liberal streamer tends to have on the, uh, as an opinion, have on the topic of, of the CAA. And uh, the main argument, those of them among them who would, that they use when it comes to uh, defending the CAA as an institution that is uh, constitutional and that is uh, in the interest of the U.S. is what both of you mentioned, that they still to this day, uh, especially since some resolutions recently, have to in the long run, especially for big operations, answer to the executive uh, branch of, of the U.S. government. Uh, as we know, this obviously is not the case, especially what JT said since the Reagan years and even with recent resolutions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but but you, I, I just want to leave an imprint on, on your uh, political consciousness or whatever, is that if an organization is powerful enough and if it has enough influence, not over a population, but over the key players inside of a government body or a state structure, whatever legislations on paper apply to it and whatever legislation uh, brackets it off as, uh, in this case, an institution which cannot function without the direct approval of the president and of the state department, if it has enough power, it does not have to actually follow those rules. Those rules only apply, rules in general, laws apply when it's uh, when a, a bigger guy tells a smaller guy, this is what you have to do. But the CIA as an organization, not only the CIA, but many others, have uh, are, are large enough to allow themselves to literally be above laws which do exist on paper. So please, when, when, a, when a usually liberal, rarely conservative, ironically conservative, Sometimes I'm not all that pro-CAA, but when they come to you and they try to pitch you the idea that uh, that every single institution in the U.S. Follow, uh, follows the Constitution and follows the specific rules and regulations which have been applied to it and use those regulations as an argument, it is absolutely idiotic because in the rest of the world, we know very well that we also have a bunch of pieces of paper that say organization A or organization B or person A or person B is supposed to be this or supposed to be that. Well, if it can happen there with somebody who amasses too much power, it can happen in your country as well. And the CAA is a perfect example of that. No matter how many laws are put in place to try and control something which has more power than the organization which is putting those laws in place, it will always remain completely and utterly independent. And as JT said, a paramilitary organization at that point. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. And uh, I think the really scary part about it is um, I don't think most Americans actually are all that, like, anti... Uh, no, they're definitely not anti-CIA, but I don't think, um, like, if anything, they're mostly either neutral or some of them even see them positively. And linking that to the, the liberal streamer, it, the clip that um, you up think sent to us just so we can take a look at is basically him defending the CIA as some information source that, you know, you could uh, refer to and all that kind of shit. And I'm just thinking... The idea of trusting this, whatever the CIA has to tell you about, like, it's one thing to look at the CIA factbook and be like, oh, this country has this large of a population, which is a kind of semi-neutral fact, so it's fine. Uh, but on the other hand, you shouldn't trust what the CIA tells you about how another country is structured politically, because vast majority of the time, it is completely, um, what's it called, politically motivated. Uh, I remember this uh, thing, <laughs> fuck, I wish I still had it, I think I deleted it, um... 
Uh, actually, maybe maybe I'll look it up. Uh, hold on. There was a thing where there was a CIA. Uh, def- uh, there's the CIA uh, definition of socialism, as funny as it is, right? And I, I, I can't find it right now. But if, if, to paraphrase what they say is basically like, oh, an ideology which basically wants to put the means of production into uh, common hands or something like that, like very, very vaguely uh, described. And then they write comma. In reality, uh, all instances of socialism lead to oh, totalitarian dictatorship, vuvuzela, one hundred billion. Like, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like the official definition. Um, like this is the, the the source of information that you want to go to. All right, whatever. Um, but yeah, l- l- let's let's uh, kind of bring it back on the rails. Coups, of course, as we mentioned, they're never ending. You can st- we can sit here and spend the next five hours talking about just listing them off. Practically, think of a country and the CIA has, in one way or another, meddled in in their local elections or funded one group over another, what have you. Okay, um, and of course, like I said, always on the side of reaction. It's never on the you know anti-imperialist, independent, uh, pro-working uh, people, or it's never that. It's always on the side of uh, the wealthiest aspects of that society, usually the most conservative, the most socially regressive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we can put that to aside. How about we look at uh, a favorite, uh, which is how the CIA practically made uh, the the uh, U.S. drug problem to fight communists. <laughs> <laughs> yes. JT, yes. Can, can you say what is it to this beautiful topic? All right. So, you know, running right-wing death squads is kind of expensive. You need money for that. And as much funding as the CIA can get from the U.S. government, drug money is much easier to get, far fewer hoops to jump through. And if you're the CIA and you've got your own fleet of planes and you can land anywhere you want in your little drug running planes, then why (laughs) not make a little bit of money on the side and ferry (laughs) giant bricks of cocaine to and from uh, the U.S., Latin American countries and introduce it into these populations that didn't have access to it before, creating an incredibly lucrative market and funneling that money back into your regime change projects. So... Uh, For example, they would smuggle these drugs uh, via Costa Rica, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, uh, etc., and they would bring it to the United States. They'd fly in their little planes, uh, land wherever they want because they have clearance to land wherever they want. They don't have to have their planes searched. They can just say uh, official U.S. government business, and then they'd take their their whatever normal cars into uh, the inner cities, uh, in the case of the crack epidemic, and just start selling these these drugs that they procured from uh, the the developing world uh, for the sake of funding their death squads. Um, so the United States, back in the 70s, I believe, um, had a new problem on their hands, and that was uh, the proliferation of crack and cocaine. So, you know, crack cocaine in the lower income portions of the cities, and the powder cocaine, the purer form, the, you know, the higher class looking one in the, the hands of... <laughs> The fancy business people, um, and we won't even get into the mandatory minimums and the the you know uh, racist baggage that comes with that. But yeah, it's the entire operation of the CIA hinges upon not only uh, being subversive in other countries, but in their own country. The their evil abroad is funded by their evil at home, and it's it's really a sick, twisted, convoluted way to undermine the rest of the world by also undermining the very place they're supposedly protecting. I can't believe how, how like uh, feeble minded both of you are. Like that, <laughs> that wasn't the point of this whole thing. Where was, this, was the place where socialism was tried for the first time in the long term? The Soviet Union, yes. What is rampant as a stereotype among Russians and Russian speaking nations? Alcoholism. How do you fight communism by fighting <laughs> alcoholism. But alcoholism <laughs> is so amazing that you can't fight it by like stopping it. You got to give the people some dope that will make them replace alcoholism with. So you introduce <laughs> crack cocaine, you introduce cocaine, you introduce weed, you introduce meth, you introduce amphetamines. All <laughs> smuggled again, as you properly said, through your right wing death squads over in South America. So uh, yes, you were in the very in the very correct di- direction, my friend JT. But uh, you, <laughs> you've you lifted did not the veil. Full picture. <laughs> the CIA still remained. The CIA still remained very patriotic to their uh, to their purpose uh, by uh, 
removing alcoholism from the local American population and turning <laughs> everybody into drug addicts. Okay, that is that okay. is that was their logic. You're you're too. I, yeah, I can't you guys believe I overlooked too, too that. Yeah. Now. One hundred percent correct. Simplest. Great failing of ours. <laughs> Too simplistic. But, uh, let, 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 me, let me just add something. Uh, one uh, again, not to recommend the book, but there is a, one of the first books written about the connection between uh, the CIA and drug smuggling was a book uh, called Dark Alliance by Gary Webb. Um, it's a good book, it has its criticisms, but uh, it's overall uh, it's generally truthful. Um, if you're unaware, though, Gary Webb, the author of yeah. this uh, <laughs> of this work. Uh, he basically uh, was uh, found dead in his home. Uh, I think it was like 2003 or 2004, um, shortly after the Iraq war started. He was found dead in his home with two bullet wounds, bu- two gunshot wounds to the back of his head. And his death was ruled as suicide. <laughs> <a> suicide. <laughs> I don't mean to like not to like I I feel horrible for the man and his family, but <laughs> like, well, come on, to, yeah. Like, and I and I think I think this is actually very um what's it called um uh, this is very intentional to basically because yeah. everybody who looks at it will be like oh, obviously he didn't die by suicide he was killed but it's kind of try, just trying to send the message out there it's like oh if you start looking into this then you're gonna also end up with two gunshot wounds in the back of your head right we're gonna duct tape you to a fucking you know the, the plastic the third world plastic chairs right <laughs> and then they're gonna fucking yeah. th- throw you in your pool and be like oh he's suicide by drowning <laughs> don't ask how he yeah. duct taped himself <laughs> <laughs> right fuck by the way i also i find it very funny the idea of like two gunshot wounds and then he okay so what the, the first one the first bullet he shot into his fucking head didn't kill him <laughs> and he had to go and try again <laughs> like, oops i stupid. missed <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. by the way he shot himself with a fucking revolver <laughs> Like okay, I'm, I'm just saying. Like he blew half his head off with the first bullet, but no, he still had you know the the consciousness, the the wherewithal yeah. to go and pick up the gun. And be like, you know what? I can make a better job of this. Your mom raised you better <laughs> than this. <laughs> oh fuck! Oh god! That's the story, though. That's how that's how it goes. It's uh, these unaccountable groups like the CIA, and they they can do this stuff and say, what are you going to do? Who's going to come after us? Nobody. And speaking to the international audience, yes, they do what they want, but they can never, ever execute their operations on a local territory without local traders. It's literally impossible. If, if they wanted to execute it through an army, yes, they would, for example, deploy it and then it goes into a full scale war. But if they want to do covert operations, they need local people to do shit for for them. I actually, unironically, no, like uh, one of my dad's best friend's uh, brother is uh, back in the, when Yugoslavia was falling apart. He was literally recruited to work for the CIA. But at that point, he felt like uh, the cause that the CIA was fighting for on the Balkan Peninsula, he was very young, etc., etc., was just, etc. Then he, he followed it. And I'm not going to either criticize him or, or call him out for being a traitor. But uh, he's a very mild example as compared to uh, people like the Contras and uh, hard, hardcore drug smugglers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which uh, very often did work with the CIA against the interests of their own country only to uh, gain personal wealth and uh, to fund whatever enterprise that they felt like they're going to create. Yeah. This actually this this um, links into something that's very interesting. I'm glad you shared a personal tidbit because then, uh, like, I can share one as well since you did. Um, the uh, for those who are unaware, I mentioned in a previous episode. Uh, but uh, my father he studied um, in the USSR <clears throat> and he was on a military scholarship, uh, basically sent by the Iraqi military to go study. Um, and uh, as part Honor of Islam. Yes, exactly. Um, he loves uh, the, like Russia and Ukraine and Belarus and basically and all f- former Soviet territories, but particularly the Slavic uh, ethnic ones. He adores them. He loves them absolutely. Uh, and it's uh, kind of um, uh, a, he considers it like a pity of his life that he hasn't been able to go back to um, like those countries in maybe like ten years. I think no more than ten years. The last time he's been was like fourteen, fifteen years ago. Um, but yeah, anyways. And what the, happened uh, in those 14, 15 years, I wonder, in Iraq? Oh, I'm scratching my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Which also, by the way, everything 
had a hand, the CIA had a hand in. But anyways, um, the reason I'm mentioning the story is um, uh, part of his uh, like education and whatnot, he visited quite a few, uh, he visited practically every Eastern Bloc country, and he also had to visit uh, a, a few of the Western Bloc countries. So he, he went to, to France and to West Germany and whatnot. And in 1981, um, there was some sort of official thing that they were sent uh, for um, from Iraq to um, uh, to West Germany. And him and a bunch of other officers uh, basically, you know, did the stuff that they need to get done. And then they were about to go back. But before they could go back, um, they all were basically rounded up by West German uh, intelligence officials. And uh, they were basically like, you know, uh, tried to be recruited as, as uh, informants. And a couple of them, they were like, if you don't want to be an informant, then uh, like, you know, this is how they, the foot in the door, how they get you to basically become an informant. Um, if you want, you can stay here in West Germany. You can officially appeal asylum right now. And you're going to get uh, citizenship, uh, an apartment and a salary, like, um, uh, like a official, like an, uh, uh, dogs. A, a, quite a, yeah, quite a high salary and all that shit is like, if you just if you want to stay here and like no questions asked and the idea would be wow. because their families wouldn't be able to come so their families would basically be kind of held hostage in Iraq so then they would feel the need to kind of com comply with what the West Germans would need and whatnot I remember my dad uh, mentioned the fact that two people actually took up the offer at the time mm. um uh, and uh, yeah, and then he went. He's like, "All oh, the fucking traitors above." <laughs> I'm like, "Based, <laughs> absolutely ba beyond based." Uh, but yeah, so, so but that this is like a very real experience um, that does happen. This is not something in movies, and this is not something that you know, uh, like, oh, you know, actually, the CIA doesn't do this. They actively do try to do this. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if in the modern day, be it in Vietnam or Cuba or China, uh, this is still an ongoing experience. It so, yeah, is absolutely everywhere, not even there, in Eastern Europe in general. Like, I I don't know if I should reveal this, but I will. Uh, I talked to the guys before the podcast. Like, I studied at a university that was very much sponsored by uh, by the U.S. in general. And it was a hot spot to find local traders, which were not only willing, but were ecstatic uh, at the opportunity to work for them. And one thing that people need to realize is that when you are recruited as an asset, you do not only become an employee of the CIA, but they make sure to use all their contacts and get you in, the, in very, very good positions in different corporations in the local country. They make, make sure that you uh, get better loans with banks. They make sure that uh, if they have, for example, an apartment in that specific country, country for it to be either given to you for no rent or sometimes even gifted to you if you're a high and uh, high risk maximum re reward uh, asset or whatever mm -hmm. it, 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 they they will sweeten the package so fucking well and that's where they're very good at and in my opinion that's what differentiates them uh, from uh, other reactionary, for example, intelligence agencies all over the world today, for example, the Russian one, which today the, is reactionary, has nothing to do with, uh, with the Cold War, etc., etc. They play much more of a role of uh, intimidating you, obviously, because they don't have the budget that the CIA does, <laughs> of intimidating you into, into following what, uh, what they want you to do or finding dirt on you and pushing it. The CIA also does that, but it's literally much less effort to just give you shit. To, to sweeten the deal, to literally create... They're applying the basic uh, cop rhetoric into turning snitches over to them. They give you shit that will alleviate your life in this system in order to, uh, to have someone who is extremely loyal uh, in the local country. And it works. You got to give it to them. It really, really works. Fear works but to an extent five six seven eight years but you have it at the back of the uh, at the back of your head that you know they have videos of you uh, sleeping with a minor or whatever and you have to uh, you have to work with them up until that point but you know that eventually they will release that so you need to find an alternative to it like a CIA agent which will go on the site and delete that video and save you from having to work for the FSB which actually is a case that happened yeah sorry it's a funny thing you mentioned about the oh yeah the um like they have video of you sleeping with somebody so you know um <laughs> the cia actually tried to blackmail uh, suharto the the indonesian uh leader uh and the anti um, imperialist leader who was very friendly to the communists um by basically uh, doing what was the equivalent of a deep fake back in the day um <laughs> of finding a guy who kind of looks like him i guess and basically have him do really <laughs> depraved shit on camera with like prostitutes 
Um, and <laughs> my favorite part about it is they tried to recruit a some diplomat or something, and they were like, yeah, see, like this is what we have on 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 Saharto. Uh, was it Saharto or Sakarno? I think it was Saharto. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> he's like, this is what we have on, and the diplomat goes, is like that that looks nothing like it. What do you think this is gonna fool? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm just like, how fuck? Sometimes they put amazing effort into shit, and sometimes they just have a bad they have a bad hair day. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, or right, 600 uh, bad hair days in the case of Fidel <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was just gonna say oh, and the stupid sh- it's like um, okay first of all let me just tell the Chad story of, of Fidel yeah. if anybody's ever d- doubted the Chadness of Fidel which I don't know I understand how you could basically there was this woman who uh, Castro had some sort of relationship with basically um, uh, they had gone to know each other and whatnot. she was I think uh, she was an American lady I believe uh, or German or German American something like that anyways uh, basically she got recruited by the CIA to go and assassinate him so they basically get her find a, they manage to find a way to get her basically into his bedroom which she ends up in his bedroom right and uh, they're talking a bit and then she pulls out the gun and she's like oh like i'm gonna kill you blah blah for the cia and this absolute chat the balls on this dude basically he he looks at him <laughs> he's like okay if you want to do that do that and then he turns around to go like it turns around and like goes to his like little counter thing to get a grab a cigar and he's just minding his own business with his back turned and this woman she couldn't do it of course because you're in supreme awe <laughs> of, the, of the girth of this of this man's fucking manhood so, <laughs> so basically afterwards she she you know it's it's almost like a, a 1950s movie i wouldn't yeah. believe it if it's not if it wasn't documented she basically drops the gun and says like oh i couldn't do it and he's like yeah i know you couldn't and then he sleeps with her and that's <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, fuck, like can you imagine imagine being the cia handler of her and then ring her the next day and be like yeah so did you do it and she's like uh, actually <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck but yeah exactly so um yeah, uh, amongst all the other stupid ways they tried to kill him, the exploding cigar. All I can and the say fucking... is, I will not yeah. need any protein shakes soon. Oh my god, you got me, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez, but yeah, uh, yeah. The, the, there's that shit. They, All I can say to... is that them communists <laughs> really be eating their fish and pineapple. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> got me enough. Oh fuck. Uh, it, uh, what you could have said is like, oh, from each according to their ability to each according to their need. That makes more. But anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking so stupid. But yeah, um, oh, no, that was good. That was good. Dialectical materialism applied <laughs> to Conolingus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. But, uh, yeah, so he, uh, the other ways they tried to kill him, yeah, fucking, uh, tried to put some fucking, uh, uh, tried to get a pill, some poison pill to him, but, you know, it was, like, frozen. They kept it in a freezer, and it froze, like, in, like, an ice block, and they couldn't, like, thaw mm. it out in time. <laughs> Just a stupid, <laughs> fun, comic, yeah, comically funny like, ways, he, he yeah. He took it, and he was like, this is some shitty MDMA, bro. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah fuck. But yeah, oh my my God, bless him. Do you know, like, I, I personally believe um, uh, one of the convincing factors that God exists is that in spite of <laughs> these hundreds of attempts to, to murder Castro, he lived to a, a beautiful full 90 years of age, right? Yep. Uh, what a absolute chat. Amazing. Fucking yeah. Smoking yeah. two cigars a day on average throughout his whole life, <laughs> fucking drinking rum yeah. all the time. Yeah. He never wore a bulletproof vest. 600 attempts on his life. With chest hair like that, you don't need a vest, <laughs> baby. Uh, honestly, fuck. Jeez. Uh, oh, I remember uh, I remember reading a C- uh, This is going to turn into the fucking Fidel Appreciation uh, yeah. <laughs> fucking <laughs> podcast. But I remember I was reading this. Literally, it's like a CIA write-up. And it's like, oh, yeah. Like, you know, uh, after the, the revolution and whatnot, Fidel was seen basically like a sex symbol and all that. Uh, and then they, tr- a weird way, it's like, oh, but then his his popularity with women rapidly like uh, fell because of his skinny legs. <laughs> and I was like, first of all, <laughs> his legs aren't skinny, number one. And number two, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and number four, he has three legs, bitch. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Fuck. Oh, Jesus Christ. But yeah, um, yeah absolutely uh, an elite gentleman. Uh, he was on his mm-hmm. Sigma grind set, for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right. he's proved assassin. that everyone can be exactly everybody can be a sigma like uh, like objectively look at look at him like he's he's like, if he wasn't a communist commando he would yeah. be like a good 6.5 
But because he is a communist commando, he becomes like a 13 out of 10, yeah. you know? So <laughs> oh it, 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 there, there's still a chance for you. Join the, b- b- <laughs> join the beautiful <laughs> Marxist movement, not because of your loyalty to your working class, but because you want to get laid. Literally, I, I, I am yet to see this argument failing. I am yet to see it. <laughs> uh, unironically, these are jokes for anybody who might take this seriously. Don't be a fucking Jesus sex Christ. pest. That's disgusting. And, yes, and of course, you go back to I know, I know, but like one guy is going to fucking clip this Oh, look, this is what they say. He's like, go eat a dick, all right, please. Yeah. Uh, and don't yet. spam all, all, all the all the girl communists in the Discord channel with, hey, I'm a communist. You want to date me? No, she yeah. fucking doesn't. Fucking eat a dick. <laughs> You'll get the wall, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Hakeem says you get the wall. <laughs> My prescription wall. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Only hierarchy allowed in communism is uh, chads and non- non-chads. <laughs> Non chads, <laughs> go away. Okay, I can Kevin, say Kevin. one bullet, no refills. <laughs> <laughs> oh, apply, that was oh good. fuck! Apply directly to the head. Anyways, um, <laughs> so uh, let's let's bring this back on the fucking on track. Um, yeah, that's that's a drug. <laughs> <laughs> that's about drug trafficking okay uh, the, the next thing that we Which want to is, talk it's about not, it's not drug trafficking it's anti-alcohol trafficking oh i'm yeah, sorry i'm sorry war it's the sorry, anti-alcohol war i sorry, will sorry. die on this hill i, I need i need to self crit i need to self crit sorry the only reason <laughs> there has not been a revolution in <laughs> the united states is because you people fucking drink piss water instead of beer okay <laughs> The only, the only people this rule does not <laughs> apply been? to is to the beautiful, beautiful Muslim uh, brothers of mine. Have which you it, with you guys, it's absolutely fine, obviously. But with the, the rest of you who are allowed to drink and you don't, there's a reason you don't have communism. <laughs> Fucking degenerates. Okay, yes, please continue. Anyways, please <laughs> with that beautiful segue completed, the next thing that we can talk about, I guess, we'll just touch upon this qu- uh, quickly because everybody knows the CIA assassinates. How about this? We can just... I'll list, like, what? The three people, I think, that are most um, uh, well-known uh, for, for being assassinated. Uh, one, of course, is an American. Uh, the other one is a Chilean. And the third one uh, is uh, a beautiful man from the Congo. The first one, of course, is Fred Hampton. Fred Hampton, who was basically uh, within the leadership of the Black uh, Panther Party, um, which was, in my opinion, the number one example of how you should organize within the United States. They really did blaze a, a path um, that had previously not been uh, investigated. Uh, and it's something that I think the American modern American left really has to resurrect, um, of course, with modern alterations. But whatever, it was an amazing movement uh, led by the black community, which directly challenged uh, the American state. Um, and by the way, it was <laughs> the conservatives of the U.S., the Republicans, passed gun um uh, law, uh, what are they called? Um, regulations. Regulations. Thank you. Gun regulation laws in fucking California. Uh, 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 <laughs> the Republicans passed this specifically to target the Black Panthers. The people are like, oh, not yep. my guns. Not my fucking money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my cock doesn't work in my gun. I need my gun. <laughs> right? <laughs> These people, right? They passed fucking gun regulation laws because black people were arming themselves um, yep. in two ways with, with guns and with theory. Um, so that's, uh, and he was basically executed, uh, by the FBI actually, but, um, uh, fucking two peas in a pod or, or whatever you fucking Americans yeah. say. Um, I mean, but that's one example. MLK too. Yeah. FBI is also evil. Yeah. yeah. And the FBI also had a hand in, in the assassination of Malcolm X. Um, of course, if you guys didn't, if you remember, uh, uh Malcolm X's daughter was found dead shortly after she did the Netflix thing. Like, I, I mean, come on, fucking hell. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, not saying anything, but saying... Something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, uh, th- that's, you know, these uh, American examples, fine. But uh, the, I think, number one example, international example, is Salvador Allende in, in Chile, which we spoke about earlier, TLDR. Um, socialist government basically wins a completely fair democratic uh, election, and then they come into power, and the CIA does basically everything in their power to dislodge them and, and get rid of them, even to the point of uh, Kissinger saying that the Ch- um, the future of Chile is too important to leave it uh, to the Chilean people. That's how, how pro-human rights and democracy the United States is. Um, and then basically, they uh, with CIA sponsorship, they assassinate uh, Allende and uh, uh, start a, a fascist coup um, led by Pinochet. That basically ruins the fucking country for the next like decade and a half. Um, that's the and now and now exactly and now the karma's coming to bite them back in the ass. Congratulations to Chile for for the first time after that brutal, disgusting dictatorship. 
for allow for helping bring in yes it's a social democrat okay i can already hear half of you in the fucking comment section i'm like ah, why did we? shut the fuck up it's it's an incredibly impressive uh, feat than for a country also. that that existed yeah. for so long under under pinochet's boot it, it nobody expected this and it is absolutely beautiful to see both uh, as a starting point from which the left can build in literally the one of the top five countries in the world where the left was the most suppressed ever and number two because the uh, the new chilean president is not only a communist but more importantly uh he is uh by descendancy and by blood a slav specifically a balkan <laughs> slav his family emigrated actually in the 1940s not in the later 1940s but the early 1940s away <laughs> from the nazis not because they were nazis but it is it, it, that, that that was super shocking to me. That was super beautiful to me. But like, what, oh my god, there's a fucking there's a probably uh, what do you call it uh, shelter? Not when you when you're a hidden commie. What do you call it? Uh, closet. The word closet uh, commie. A, a, a closet commie hiding his power levels. Which uh, which one over there is? It's a, it's a beautiful sight to see. It's uh, incredible that we actually have Slavic representation, which is not some. Uh, incredibly backwards uh, right winger so good for them and uh salvador allende i hope he's watching and at least has uh, somewhat of a smile on his face honestly but to to um add i think the third one which is a, a great tragedy that we don't hear too much about on the left uh, i won't take too much time on it but i think you guys should read up on it if you don't know about it is the um assassination of uh, patrice lumumba who was the uh, basically first uh, legally elected prime minister of independent uh, Congo. Um, and uh, he was, by the way, on the suspicion that he might be a communist. He wasn't even an outspoken communist. Yes, he went and visited the USSR and a bunch of other socialist nations, and he kind of tried to have t ties with everybody. Um, but, uh, yeah, the potential, oh, God forbid, he might be somewhat sympathetic to the communists. So he was assassinated, um, and basically a, a, a uh, you know, right-wing pro-Western uh, dictatorship uh, emerged in uh, the place of, of his assassination, the overthrow of uh, his government, uh, which resulted basically in the complete halting of the development of the Congo to this day, mind you. Um, so if you can imagine, this assassination took place in 1961, and now is 2022. Uh, so for basically 60 years, the uh, development of uh, a country in Central Africa, which is, by the way, one of the richest countries on Earth by minerals and resources and, and everything else, has been basically stuck in lack of development, if not inverse development, not inverse, uh, like, uh, oh my god, uh, de-development, uh, the word's not fucking coming to me right now. Uh, come on, help me out. You're, the American is with us. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm actually trying to think about this. What is the what word? Is uh, reg uh, regression, maybe? Regression, yeah. I guess we can say regression. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, the regression of their uh, economic development because of an assassination of a leader who was basically slightly too nice to, to other communists, to, to communist countries. Um, and yeah, that's uh, a serious crime. That's usually not very... Uh, uh, not spoken of frequently, and if you're very interested in this, also there's a, a speech given by um, uh, by Guevara uh, about um, about that mentions Lumumba specifically, and it's uh, about the beast uh, how um, imperialism is bestial. It's a bestial system. It turns man into beasts. If you just write uh, Che Guevara beast into uh, YouTube, you'll find uh, the, the the speech. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah. sorry, go on. Sorry, ten, tens of thousands of. Uh... Protesters came out in Belgrade when Lumumba was killed back in Yugoslavia in what, 60 or 61. Arguably any socialist that considers himself a socialist from my part of the world really knows about him. Uh, it's yeah, It was an absolutely disgusting tragedy and it was very beautiful to see uh, you know, the local population really feel with, uh, with the struggle of the, of the people of the Democratic Republic of Congo back in the day might have gone unheard in uh, the part of the world where they wanted it to go unheard because he was uh, struggling against the imperialism of exactly those places. But in other places, his, uh, his death was genuinely not in vain. Yeah. And by the way, just an interesting side note, while the United States was basically uh, facilitating the, the assassination of this great man, uh, the Soviet Union, which was giving lending support to, to him and his government at the time, uh, after his assassination, uh, named um, 
uh, opened and named a university after him in Moscow called the Patricia Lumumba University. I think today it's called the People's Friendship University or something. Um, and it was basically a um, international university uh, that had uh, faculties of humanities and uh, technology and, and medicine and e economics and everything else, basically, um, where you uh, people from third world countries around the world basically got scholarships um, to come and study uh, in the Soviet Union to get these degrees and come, you know, like a form of international internationalism, just like how Cuba does nowadays, um, which is a uh, yeah, it's it's very interesting to 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 compare the two the two uh, um, strategies, but yeah, um, that's my little bit about assassinations. I don't want to actually like dwell on it too much, um, but yeah, there's so many more. You can't. There's the fucking list is practically endless um and especially if we expand it extend it beyond just like presidents and prime ministers and whatnot uh it's yeah um insane so the thing about the cia one of the many things about the cia is they're not terribly quiet about a lot of this stuff like you see a lot of uh ex-operatives who will come clean to what whether that's to ease their conscience or because they just want to brag about how cool they were and stuff like that. You, there are a lot of people who talk about their experience in the CIA uh, over the years. But you can also just find their past publications online. Um, one infamous one is a 90-page booklet called Psychological Operations in Guerrilla Warfare. Uh, and the TLDR of that is the, that the CIA likes to outsource their more heinous crimes to local U.S.-funded paramilitaries. So when some politician is kidnapped or tortured or assassinated, the CIA gets to keep their hands clean. They get to keep their veneer of plausible deniability. Um, it's all part and parcel of the, the ploy to keep the American people from realizing that we are the bad guys, that we are the ones yeah. causing the greatest amount of instability and chaos and suffering that the world has likely ever seen. Um, and that is going to continue to be the case. And that's something that we really need to grapple with um, as Americans. And there's a clip I'd, I'd like to play um, from a former CIA agent, John Stockwell, um, and it really puts in perspective just how bad the impact of the CIA has been. So let's take a listen. They undertake to run operations in every corner of the globe. Uh, they also undertook the license of operating are just totally above and beyond U.S. laws. They had a license, if you will, to kill, but also they, they took that to a license to smuggle drugs, a license to do all kinds of things to other people in other societies in violation of international law, our law, and every principle of nations working together for a healthier and more peaceful uh, world. We manipulated and organized the overthrow of functioning constitutional democracies in other countries. We organized secret armies and directed them to fight in just about every continent in the world. We encouraged ethnic minorities to rise up and fight. People like the Mosquito Indians in Nicaragua, the Kurds in the Middle East, the Mongs in, in Southeast Asia. We have organized and we still do and fund death squads in countries around the world like the Treasury Police in El Salvador which are responsible for most of the killing of the 50,000 people just in the 80s, and there were 70,000 before that. An orchestration, CI, secret teams, and propaganda led us directly into the Korean War. We were attacking China from the islands, Kemoi, Matsu, Thailand, Tibet, uh, a lot of drug trafficking involved in this, by the way, until eventually we convinced ourselves to fight the Chinese in Korea, and we had the Korean War, and a million people were killed. Same thing for the Vietnam War, and we have extensive documentation of how the CIA was involved at every level, or the national security complex, because it's a very cooperative thing, into manipulating the nation into the Vietnam War. Let me just put it this way. The best heads that I coordinate with studying this thing, we count at least minimum figure six million people who've been killed in this long 40-year war that we've waged against the people of the third world. Are we the baddies? Yeah. <laughs> like, are we the baddies? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, unironically we are the baddies. Like that's Americans need to grapple with that fact. We're, it's it's become too undeniable. It's it's hmm. it's something we need to internalize. And uh, I was just uh, But not not fully, add. but be careful. We don't fully internalize. Like it, it's not the population. Like, 
and you only use that. Yes, no, no, so I managed to not the them, average person. Yeah, yeah, not the average exactly. person. We're the American people are perfectly pleasant most of the time, and a lot of it just comes down to not having time to understand these things, to learn about them. But we need to recognize that the people who run this nation, which with we identify, are the ones that are. Are committing these heinous crimes, and we need to not. We need to be careful not to cast our lot with those people. I should say. And of course, this also ties into um, the the numerous works that they've uh, published that are actually out, and you could read if you want about, for example, sabotaging leftist organizations. Uh, and I still I remember. Um, it's a shame I didn't prepare this beforehand. I uh, I just thought of it now. Uh, but it, it's basically you know like a checklist of shit you should do to disrupt. Oh organizing I've got activities that. i've got it saved please open it up just Hold read on. like one or two things i remember it's like oh be a dick basically try to make <laughs> processes as yeah. slow as possible try to you know uh, be as sectarian as possible all, all these fucking issues and uh yeah when you look at the the general stra- um uh, development of the left particularly in the united states uh yeah, I, <laughs> I'm. I don't mean. I don't want to be the guy who's like, yeah, I see their fingerprints on this, but I kind of do see their <laughs> fingerprints on this. Yeah. Right? Um, All right. Here's. I've got the list pulled up. There are there are eight bullet points. I'll do. I think five of them that are highlighted here. Uh, make speeches. Talk as frequently as possible and at great length. Um, <laughs> bring up irrelevant issues as frequently as possible. Haggle over precise wordings of communications, minutes, resolutions. Refer back to matters decided upon uh, and attempt to reopen the question. Break and Democratic be Centralism, worried, basically. Exactly, yep. Be worried about the propriety of any decision. Raise the question of whether such action as is contemplated lies within the jurisdiction of the group, et cetera, et cetera. It's basically, like Hakeem said, it's just be an asshole. Just, be, just constantly mm. be poking and needling and slowing things down, just being a stick in the mud. It's all, yeah. A lot of it's really Pedantic boring cunt. stuff, but it's super effective. <laughs> yeah. Exactly right, and it's something that you'll actually see. I, uh, if uh, <laughs> yeah. you've been, in, particularly like uh, from what I've seen uh, of the American left, uh, you do see instances of this. Um, so, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, always good to know your history. Of course, a, a good book also on CIA interventions in in, in leftist um, groups within the United States is um, Heavy Radicals. That's what I'm thinking of. Um, it was the FBI, not the not not the CIA, but it's a good book. It's published by um, Zero Books, if I remember correctly. It's called Heavy Radicals: The FBI's Secret War on America's Maoists, which is excellent. It's a great work. You really, really need to read it because it the same tactics that they used against them will be used against you once the fucking yeah. movement actually builds up to a sufficient um, uh, degree. My last point that I really want to hammer home to to my American friends here is that if you live in the U.S., you are also a target of this stuff. Don't think that because you live in the country that runs this operation that you are not a target of that operation. The CIA runs hundreds of media uh, outlets, operations, producing propaganda for every type of platform imaginable. They've awarded billions of dollars in secretive contracts to Microsoft, Oracle, IBM, Amazon, Google. If you find yourself parroting... The deprogram, yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> if you find yourself parroting State Department talking points, odds are you've taken the bait. So really scrutinize what you're consuming, um, who those talking points benefits, where they get their funding, stuff like that. It should be common sense, but you think that you're immune to propaganda, and we're just not. Everybody has some susceptibility to being fed incorrect information, and we need to be aware of that. But that's just something to keep in mind for my American comrades. And with that said, uh, I think I'd like to mention just, I think, two things that are kind of a bummer, and then we'll end uh, the, pot- the this episode with something a bit more fun. Uh, the first thing that's, again, a bit of a bummer, there was um, the, the CIA, if you're unaware, runs black sites all around the world, including within the United States, uh, which basically uh, illegally detain people without uh, jury or trial or nothing. No, no, no legal recourse whatsoever. Um, they're basically uh, pulled uh, you know, into an unmarked van and then taken into a place to be uh, interrogated, tortured, and whatnot, uh, or sometimes even just for sadistic reasons. And these exist all around the world. Um, but uh, there's two that I would uh, like to highlight. Uh, the first one, uh, which basically came out um, because the the CIA admitted that this is that this is happening, um, and some journalists basically kind of figured it out, uh, is a place that was in Afghanistan called that they referred to as the Salt Pit, uh, as pleasantly as that sounds. Uh, interestingly, by the way, the Taliban has uh, destroyed this place, I believe, uh, now, uh, or, or the U.S. when it was pulling out has destroyed this place to kind of cover up what was um, going on in there. Um, but 
uh, it was basically a torture facility, just like Otano and all these other places. Um, and the reason I want to highlight this place is because there were several people who uh, were detained in this place that had nothing whatsoever to do with any global terrorism or anything, like completely innocent people that had nothing completely to do with with uh, with anything, and they were taken without trial or or. Uh, any evidence to basically have enhanced interrogation techniques uh, practiced on them, uh, which included shit like sleep deprivation, being kept in uh, a solitary confinement with no light, uh, no food, uh, in the winters being stripped na naked and just left in a cold cell uh, without heating, um, having no uh, access to water, having basically a bucket to, uh, to uh, you know, do your business in, basically. Um, amongst many other things, beatings and even rape. Um... But uh, the reason I would like to highlight this particular thing is uh, because there was one guy in particular uh, called uh, Khalid al-Masri who was a guy who had a similar name to another dude who was actually related to something, um, some other organization, and they wanted to ca catch that guy. But they caught this random dude by accident who had no connection to anything um, and kidnapped him when he was like on vacation in Macedonia or something and uh, took him to Afghanistan and basically tortured him uh, for years. Uh, and uh, by the way, they knew. They knew this guy didn't have anything to do with anything. Um, and finally, they let him out. Uh, he went out and then he basically tried to sue both the CIA and a bunch of like transport facilities and stuff like that that basically took him from Macedonia to Afghanistan and every single one of those um, trials was uh, uh, dismissed. All the cases were uh, dismissed um, because of course uh, the, the real levers of power exist elsewhere. Um, so that's a pleasant thought to, to have in the back of your mind. But this is a, a solitary example. I want to give the example from my own uh, country, my my um, uh, great and lovely Iraq, and that is something I hope you've heard of called Abu Ghraib. Now, if you don't know what Abu Ghraib is, it was a prison uh, in Iraq. It still is basically a prison. Um, I mean, it's uh, closed. It's been closed for several several years now, but um, uh, unofficially, uh, in, in parts, is still semi-active. Um, that uh, was turned by the American invasion into a detention facility for a vast majority of the inmates, by the way, were completely innocent. Um, it was basically, oh, you're suspected of being, you know, anti the American uh, invasion, which, by the way, ooh, I wonder why. I wonder why they would be against the American invasion. Um, but if you're suspected, you'd be thrown in this place. Uh, and this was known for uh, basically illegal detention um, and torture of disgusting kinds um, to the point of a uh, of course, again, sexual assault, the same stuff, electrocution, um, uh, waterboarding. Think about it, they did it in this place. Uh, but one thing that I really want to highlight is this became a huge thing because there was a bunch of inst investigative journalists that leaked this and then it became big news around the world because, oh, the United States ro rode into Iraq on human rights and freedom and we want to bring democracy and this is what they ended up doing. So uh, the United States needed some scapegoats. So they basically got like three or like ten uh, low-level uh, uh, officers and, and soldiers who were tangentially connected to this um, and they gave them some you know they discharged them from the military gave them a bunch of bullshit sentences um, like uh, prison sentences most of which by the way they didn't even serve like two months some I think the longest served was 10 years uh no, yeah, the longest served was 10 years, and this guy, they were trying to make an example of this one person. But everybody else had, like, multi-year sentences, and they were released after one year, or a year and a half, or two years. If you're an African-American youth, and you get caught with a fucking eighth of weed or whatever, you're going to get, like, 10 years in the U.S. But go to another country and basically uh, electrocute people and uh, sodomize them with fucking, uh, with your rifles, and you're going to get, uh, you know, a year in prison, and you're going to get out in three months with good behavior. Um, and one particular example is a horrific human being, by the name of uh, Lindy England. Uh, she, mm. If you are aware, she's there's a famous picture, one of the famous pictures um, of uh, from the Abu Ghraib prison where it's a woman and she's kind of looking down at an Iraqi man who has a, a leash tied around his neck and she's kind of like dragging onto him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just you know. want to interact here just to modernize exactly this point, just literally two seconds. I made a whole video about uh, Orientalism and about uh, the Balkan Wars, the Yugoslav Wars, etc., etc. Thousands of videos, just like mine, all over the platform, not demonetized, not made 18+. plus. The only thing that my video had was a little picture. Which picture? Exactly a picture of this woman with a collar around an Iraqi man's naked 
head on the fucking pavement, on the cold, cold ground, and immediately my video became 18 plus, etc., etc. Uh, just continuing, I think it is relevant. Now, fuck my fucking YouTube channel or whatever, but like they make sure to erase every single inch of information that can be degrading towards how degrading they are to others. Uh, be it online or be it in physical copies. That's 100% true. I mean, my video on the CIA has the same exact picture and the same mm. thing happened to mine. You have to click through like three I agree to watch this content warnings to, to watch my video about the CIA. It's, yeah, it's very clear. No, no censorship under capitalism, guys, please. The the market of ideas. <laughs> Anyways, no, no, but l l l just, just, just to tie up this point, this absolutely despicable human being, um, uh, she was sentenced for two years, I think, and then she got out in like four months or whatever the fuck. Basically, bullshit, a bullshit sentence. Um, and now she's living her life normally in the US. Nothing is, uh, nothing's happened to her. And in, in, in 2012, uh, she was released from her bullshit prison sentence, and she was asked, like, do you regret what you did? And she explicitly said, no, she did not regret regret the torture of innocent people in another country and she says and i quote their Ira their lives like iraqis their lives are better now they got the better end of the deal and then she continues by saying they weren't innocent they're trying to kill us and you want me to apologize to them it's like saying sorry to the enemy and i'm good god yeah, Iraqi like man, uh, yeah, hey, I, I'm not sure. I think one of the three of us here is Iraqi. Do, do you agree with, <laughs> with, uh, with her? Yeah, <laughs> no, no. You know, like, oh, yeah. I mean, okay, uh, the, the fucking brain rot of somebody who goes and invades another country and then, and then says they're trying to kill us, they weren't innocent. <laughs> I mean, fucking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, brain rot. What can I tell you? And it's this at this point, this doesn't even make me um uh, like angry anymore. It just yeah, makes me sad that number one, right, yeah, yeah the, number one that these people exist. Number one that uh, number two that these people were never ever ever punished. Uh, and number three, they're uh, unrepentant for this. And my advice to her, if this would ever even reach her, which you know, if it does, then. Look, I, uh, I don't know how you sleep at night, but uh, my advice to her would be uh, repent to your Lord because after you die, you'll have to face your con the, uh, the consequences of your actions. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, with that <laughs> absolute bummer <laughs> of a conversation, <laughs> I, I, uh, I hope that wasn't too much for some people. But um, with that said, let's move on to something a bit more lighthearted, which was the beautiful ad <laughs> that the CIA put out. Just, I think it was like <laughs> yeah. two years ago now, I think, or a year ago, yeah. which was basically um, uh, an ad in which a, a uh, Latina woman was talking about, you know, <sighs> how should I w uh, word this? Again, you know how as capitalism progresses, it the superstructure tries to change to fit what's currently like, you know, in vogue, right? So that's why when uh, under fascism, which is a capitalistic system, there's this hyper, you know, a rigid militaristic society where um, gender stereotypes and certain social values are very strictly adhered to, etc., etc. Uh, well, meanwhile, in modern quote unquote woke uh, capitalism, whatever you want to call it, um, they try to put in, you know, like, oh, we're diverse. See, we have blacks and Hispanics. We have gays. We're pro women. We're feminists. Like all this kind of shit. And that was basically the gist of this fucking ad in which you have every this, time uh, yeah. every time a male colleague does a microaggression to you find your nearest button which will cook call for a drone strike on a <laughs> local iraqi village and you will feel better about yourself hey sarah yeah sarah a nice skirt sarah <laughs> five thousand dead iraqis <laughs> My God, and and you know it's it's the reason I don't like this fight because they try to uh, film it in such a. Uh, I wish you guys could actually. I wish we could show you the video of this. But please go look it up uh, after this. It's. They try to make it hyper cinematic. She has a shirt of like the the feminist symbol, like the the symbol of Venus with a fist in it, and it says "You can do it, Mija," underneath because she's Latina. In uh. case you forgot, right and. And she's talking about how her dad or something like really supported her. And she's like, oh, but women are always like put down. But here in the CIA, <laughs> right? And they have like kids, they have like kids drawings like around the CIA building or something, yeah. right? And it's just supposed to, and she, oh my God. For, for one, all one the children part, they've killed, they collected a drawing. <laughs> <laughs> one of the pictures she has, I think it's like with McCain or something. It's like some war criminal. And she has this yeah. big fucking smile. Like she's actually proud of, 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 of this nonsense. And I'm just like. 
I'm neurodivergent, non-binary, and I have a kill count of 60,000. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. You know something, uh, if I remember correctly, the, the end of it, she ends it like, oh, I'm, I'm, poly- I'm unapologetically myself, and I want you to be unapologetically yourself. And I'm like, are they truly, really trying to sell being true to yourself in a CIA recruitment ad? Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> By the way, how is murder? I mean, okay, uh, I mean, that really comments on the American soul, but murdering third world brown <laughs> people have never done anything to you. Uh, might actually be <laughs> being true to yourself in some way. I mean, <laughs> fuck. Oh, Lord. Yeah, it is I mean, fascinating how they try to uh, rebrand everything. Like they've done with the M and M's recently. M and M's is facing like a child slavery lawsuit, and they're like, "Oh, we're gonna update the green M and M so it's uh, more progressive." <laughs> it's like, Come if on. you look at if exactly, but if you look at their channel, one very interesting thing happens. They tried a few videos with profiles. Probably they recorded like a hundred, but only three, four actually came out of profiles of people who work there, so that they can push this sort of. Oh, obviously we're not paying salaries as much as before, so we must hire some uh, minorities over here. But uh, if you look at the last four or five videos, they realize, okay, this doesn't work, so let's go back to good old McCarthyism. So uh, most of them are about items which the CIA treasures a lot. And I clicked on one of them and it's, this book was banned in the Soviet Union, Mm -hmm. but the CIA, in order to fight for the freedom of the Soviet people, printed very tiny copies of it and flung it over the bur wall so that people can actually <laughs> read more about how much they are oppressed true yeah, that's, but no it's, it's good it's good like advertising guy again advertising guy part two in this in this episode uh, they hired a better dude like do a more honest thing like there's over a hundred I don't know what year it was I think 2018 or 2019 over 135,000 Americans voluntarily applied to be a part of the CIA in that year. Yeah. And it's a very difficult uh, application. Like you actually have to send serious documentation. It's not just click apply now on the website, probably over a million if we count those. Uh, but uh, the, a, a proper good advertising, the marketing director for the CIA, marketing uh, recruitment marketing director for the CIA should be like, dude, we have more than enough insane reactionaries that will love to do this job. But... The problem there is insane reactionaries have not stepped out of their fucking uh, uh, mother's womb because they keep fucking it over in Wisconsin. Oh and they don't speak a few languages. <laughs> they don't uh, know how to interact with a person who looks different than them for more than three seconds without calling them the N-word. So they can't really be recruited by the CIA in order to be sent abroad and in order to do what they need to do. So that's why the CIA is trying to get in on the get in on the wokes and shit, uh, yeah. but it's obviously not fucking working well. <laughs> I remember, by the way, uh, just a stupid side note, but uh, for a bonus episode, we should actually uh, uh, go through the application, <laughs> the CIA application. Oh my god! Oh my <laughs> god! It's a ridiculous idea. <laughs> Write it down in the Discord right now, yeah. motherfucker. That is fucking hilarious. Uh, but yeah, I was just just before. Uh, I remember the best. The best part about this ad was the comments at the time. When I scrolled down, a, a bunch of people were also making fun of like you know how how um, you know how stupid that they're trying to wokeify this. But the amount of people who are like, oh, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, I fear, I fear for the future of this country because, like, it's, it's a Latino person working in the CIA. Uh, yeah. It's not a white person. I remember, uh, I remember. See, like, one comment was like, you know, the end part, which is like, I want you to be unapologetically you. And I remember one comment, and the guys wrote like, unless you're white, then you must apologize. I'm like, <laughs> fucking, <laughs> I, dude. And the racism. I remember one of the, one guy was like, oh, um, uh, why can't she get some of her CIA b- buddies to uh, uh, to take care of those Los Angeles gangs? Then. Hmm. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> they managed to like, alienate every single viewer of that video. <laughs> Ever. Like, there's zero people who like that fucking video. This is literally... This is, uh, just uh, just okay. hire, hire you, Gopnik. Just Com- hire you, Gopnik. <laughs> no, no, comrades. No, no, they don't have to. There's already a comrade working in the marketing department of the CIA. Oh, Maybe we're looking plant. at this the wrong way. Maybe, literally, they may have just been smart enough to sit down and be like, how can I fool these... 75-year-old old white man uh, billionaires who run this fucking firm to uh, look at an advertising proposal and agree to it while at the same time it's going to be an ad which is not going to work in any way. And if there's an example of this, it's exactly this video. Like nobody liked it. Absolutely nobody liked it. Except probably a few libs, but uh, then again. 
Oh, it's the Ivy cool. League liberal liberal crowd, but yeah, that's I all agree. they've got left. They've always been kind of the the pool from which the CIA draws. They're already recruited, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the private law firm, government law, or uh, CIA or FBI. That's pretty much mm-hmm. it. The only people the CIA really competes with is the FBI. Like, who gets to <laughs> who gets to shoot black people locally or abroad, bro? <laughs> you yeah. Know? So to wrap up, basically, guys, we went over every single aspect of uh, things you might not have known that the CIA had done, both internationally, both domestically. Uh, We have definitely established the fact that uh, Castro has fucked more women than you have. And most likely you should (laughs) ask your mom about this very good looking uh, six out of 10 in capitalism, but 13 out of 10 in communism, uh, a Spanish speaking individual who smokes everything up in very, very good uh, uh, Siglo VI and Robusto Cohibas. Uh, and with that, we'd like to conclude the episode. Thank you for listening as always. Uh, this is Yugopnik. I'm JT. And I'm Hakeem. Go look up that picture of Justin Trudeau's mother making bedroom eyes at Castro. <laughs> <laughs> and this and this has been the D program. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. <laughs>